and she's black. She's kind of, well, ain't no kind of, and she's fat. And she got this hump, kind of hump in the back, kind of like big at the top and little at the bottom. I can't stand that kind of Tasmanian body right there. But she kind of not giving me the stank face, but you know, like, ugh. So I caught that shit. Ugh. You know. Oh, I could tell she didn't really like me. She didn't really like me. So to make a long story short, she, you know, she tried to pretend. And it was me and this other woman. And I'm going I'm to have to tell you, she is the real reason why I quit. That other woman that started with me. Oh, she's a motherfucker. She's a motherfucker. And I could have talked to the man that hired me. But see, that demon, she had went behind my back talking to him about me. And she told me yesterday that she did it. And I was so fucking mad. I'm like, you out of fucking order. But see, she was intimidated by me because here I am. I'm not trying to be a show off, but I know how to be an intellectual. I know how to talk proper in a certain setting, in a job setting, in a professional setting. I know how to dress business casual and put my best foot forward. And I learn very fast. You know, I may not know certain things, but if you show me, I'm a fast learner. And see, I think she felt threatened by me. You know, it's a lot of black niggas like that. And it's so sad that it is. We are so competitive with each other. And it's so fucking sad and fucked up because we got it bad enough as it is. The shit is so fucking disgusting. And then we have to come in with each other. Do y'all know I'm so sick of that? And that is the number one reason why I stay running from job to job. I, I, I stay running from the niggas. I cannot stand it. And it's real fucked up that we can live together. We can work together. We can't do shit together. And it's the bottom fucking line. And nobody wants to admit that shit, but it's the truth. And in this particular city right here, I have noticed something since I've been here. And I'm not going to apologize for being intelligent. I'm not going to apologize for being articulated. And then when you talk a certain way, they think, and I have heard a lot of black people say this, oh, you think you white, you talking white, what the fuck? And if I've been to school, shouldn't I show some signs that I've been to school? Why should I dumb myself down to make you feel more comfortable? You should want to talk proper or talk quiet, you stupid bitch. And they feel threatened when you talk proper and they try to make you feel bad. Oh, you think you white. Oh, you trying to talk quiet. And they make you feel like, oh, you, you ain't black enough because you over here talking proper. And that is so fucking stupid. I think it's so fucking stupid. And I think the girl that was training me, and see, she could, like most black people do, she could turn her black on and turn it off. I can do the same thing. And see, she was training me and that other girl in this room by herself. And she wanted that door closed. So when she closed that door, she turned on the on the, on the ghetto then. She turned it on the ghetto then. When she closed that door, oh, she black. 
But then when the door come open and the white boss come in there, oh, she she's so proper now. And I said to myself the first day, look at this fake ass bitch. And see, she let me know. And, and that other girl, she the head nigga in charge around there. So don't you think you're going to come in here and take my position or get too comfortable? I run this. I keep y'all other niggas in line for the white people. In other words, she's a bed bench. In other words, she's a control coon. And she kept, I, whew, she got on my nerves with this. Every time she turned around, I've been here 11 years. I've been here 11 years. I've been here 11 years. I got so sick and tired of her telling me and reminding me she's been here 11 years. 11, I get it. You've been here 11 years. And she wants to let everybody know she's the favorite nigga at the job. I don't care. And I could not get away from her. She's, oh, Jesus, I got so sick of that girl. And I'm trying to smile and I'm trying to not get on her bad side because she running her big at the top, little at the bottom ass in the white people face every chance she get telling on the niggas because she want to keep her job. I don't have to do that in order to secure my position. And I can't stand black people who do that. They got to keep on telling the boss, telling the boss, telling the boss every little thing you do or what they think you might do. So they feel like they the trusted nigga. And, and let me tell you something, honey. And she said that. She said that the first day with me and that other black woman. She said, I want to make them know, talking about the white people that own the company and that work there. She said, I want them to know that they can depend on me. I want them to feel like they need me and I need them. What the fuck? That's the language of a coon. So by running to them and telling, 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 oh, you're needed by them. Oh, no, you're not. Let me tell you something. If you tell on your own and you don't have no loyalty to your own, they are using you. And it's just a matter of time before they get rid of you. If, if, if they can't trust you with your own, do you think that they're going to let you stick around them and be disloyal around them? But you can't tell a coon nothing because they think they know everything and they so devoted to their master. You've been here 11 years, bitch. You could have got your own shit off the ground in 11 years, but she want to brag about she going to college. Why your ass ain't been to college by now? And in other words, she's a scary Negro. And a scary Negro on a white person's job is a dangerous Negro. And I'm not fixing, to, I'm not even fixing to put myself in this uh, situation. You're going behind my back, telling the white boss every little thing I do. And if I stay one minute, Past my break time. There you go with your big ass. Running and closing the door. Telling the boss. I'm so sick of her. And then I'm thinking. If I had my own vehicle. At least on the break. I could go out there. And sit in my car. And get the fuck away from her. But I can't escape that big at the top. Little at the pop bottom bitch. Because every break. She's sitting her ass in the corner. Looking at me. What the fuck? So I said yesterday, I'm going to go outside. I found out one of the men at the job, they told me I could go outside. I said, oh, thank God. Because I get so sick of her. I get so sick of her. Can I have some privacy? I can't get no privacy. My break is my break. I need a break from her. But on my break... There she is, sitting at the same 
table and see what she's doing. She's trying to evaluate me. She's trying to listen to my conversations. She want to analyze me so she can go back to the boss, close the door, and tell them what she think about me. Am I going to be a good fit? Oh, she doing this. Oh, she doing that outside of the job. You might want to watch her. Oh, she talking about this. She talking about that. I can't stand that kind of nigga. I can't stand that kind of nigga. And I got so sick of that girl yesterday. And when I found out that I could go outside, it was cold as a motherfucker. But I said, you know what? I'm going to go outside on my fucking break to get away from her. Because I'm so sick of her looking at me. And I, whew, I'm so sick of that girl. And okay. So yesterday, I started catching on. See, she didn't think I was going to be able to catch on to the software. And we was going you know, rehearsing, you know, because the job was a collection job, calling people, asking them when they can pay their bills. And I'm like, how the fuck I'm going to be calling people, asking them about their bills, and I got fucking bills overdue. But anyway, that was being a hypocrite, calling people about their job, but they did, and I got some fucking dead fucking. And see, that, that, that blows so many holes in the narrative of the fucking trolls who keep lying and saying, I, I got felonies. Oh, you know, a lie don't care who tells it, just as long as it gets told. That's their narrative. So if I got felonies, <laughs> how in the fuck am I passing all these background checks? How can I work for a collection agency and they running all kind of background checks? They get all kind of, you know, you see how the trolls be lying on me. But anyway. So, okay, yesterday we was doing some rehearsals. And honey, one thing about me, I mastered in English, okay? I had several uncles and aunts who were school teachers on my on my mom's side. That was required in my household. You had to be smart as fuck. You could not be a dummy in my household. Okay? And I I, I got straight fucking A's in, in English classes. So you, I run several marathons around your fucking ass every fucking time when it comes to talking, writing, reading, all that shit. I mastered that shit. So when she said... We was going to have to call people and we got to um, read the little script and all that. You ain't said nothing to me because I got that. We got that in the bag. So I'm ready. Oh, they thought I was going to be all timid and scared and fumbling over my words and all that. Honey. Hello, Mrs. Smith. How are you doing today? This is, I didn't say Carmen Kaboom, you know, I made up a name. This is Carmen Kaboom, and I was calling you about um, this bill at the such and such um, office, and I was wondering if you could make a payment arrangements or you could uh, pay this bill today. Oh, they was looking at me like I had did something fucking wrong. And see, they wasn't expecting me to just exceed like this, right? And come out all professional and all of this and oh, oh that, that was acting like they was offended because i was i wasn't like boisterous with it you know and so she was looking at me like oh oh you oh you want to be like so intelligent huh Oh, okay. So she tried to make it hard for me. She tried to make it hard for me. So then she started just nitpicking, nitpicking. And every time she started testing us, I was acing that shit. And she, she was putting more into the fucking shit than what it was necessary. And then, you know, all of this F1, F9, click on F10 and all. You know, I I had never 
did none of that before, but I had learned that shit within one day. And she was so shocked and surprised that I was giving her the right answers. And then, you know, she was talking to me yesterday and it's a way that she be talking and she be twitching her nose and it's real evil. And she's talking to me and saying one thing, but she's sending subliminal messages to me. She let me know, bitch, you better pipe down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in other words, she felt, I, I, I could see it in her face. She was feeling threatened by me. And she was, you know, I don't know how to put it, but I started feeling.